And one of the ways to do that and try and meet the demands of our struggling grid is to consider alternative sources of energy. Now imagine you're a massive producer uh, like Goldfield South Deep Mine. It's the first to install a large scale solar power plant. It's absolutely massive. It's a 50 megawatt plant, uh, aptly named Kanyisa, stands for uh, Light Up. Well, let's head back to Pulelet Sweetie Jones, uh, where the light is now shining down. We'll get a much better image. Uh, Pule, good morning to you of what is, if you put those uh, panels together side by side on the right hand side of this uh, mine at the moment, you're about to see when we head over to Pule how big it is. It's powering some of those gold field operations. Morning, Pule. Give us a sense of uh, what it looks like now that the sun has actually risen. Yeah, definitely, Gareth. This is quite a massive mining operation taking place here in the area of Western Area. Just about behind me, what we're seeing is about 120,000 solar plants, which is equivalent to about uh, 200 soccer fields and is able to power about uh, 5,000 households. And what we also understand is that the solar plant has the potential to provide around 20% of South Deep's average electricity consumption. Now, um, what we're being told here is that uh, when they, whenever there's low shedding stages as high as stage six, um, these solar plants will then assist in terms of keeping the energy to allow um, light on here and the energy on to allow for the operations not to be disturbed. But uh, what we also understand here, Gareth, is that uh, the um, the farm, you know, the solar plant farm may just go up to 60 megawatts soon, and this is in an effort to try and increase the energy availability of keeping the lights on here in this area. Um, we also do understand that uh, the mining company did receive their uh, license from NERSA to uh, get the solar uh, plantation here operating in 2021. And they say that since then, this has improved the operations of the uh, mining uh, work here when the, the, the staffers are busy here at work. Um, and of course, we also do know that they are looking at implementing wind farms here as well, which may supplement uh, the solar plant when there isn't uh, enough sunlight received to pump into some of these uh, solar plantations that we're seeing behind us here. Uh, quite a massive operation taking place here at Gareth and we uh, do understand that just about uh, 3,200 workers here at this mining area and of course about 2,200 contractors and we've been told that uh, some of the workers here are being equipped with some of the skills necessary within the mining industry. Let's just take a listen to what one of the officials um, at this mining company had to say earlier on when he spoke about the intention to increase from 50 megawatt to 60 megawatt which will see a much more reliance and sufficient um, operation uh, when there is um, times of load shedding here at this place let's take a listen when we started with the plants, um, you know, the plant was a 40 megawatt, uh, you know, um, plant, and we increased the capacity to 50 megawatts, and certainly we are looking into increasing it further to uh, um, 60 megawatt. When you look at our maximum demand, you know, um, it does range. This year we're sitting at a maximum demand of uh, some 62 megawatts, um, so we will certainly be looking into increasing the capacity um, beyond the 50, but also to uh, supplement it with the other energy sources. Oh, because also important, Pule, to remember as we take a look at the aerial footage of just how big this is uh, for the mine as well. I don't mean just the scale of this. You put those solar panels side by side. By the way, I had to double check my fact on this one, Pule, and I was actually uh, wrong. Well, I was partly right, partly right. And if you take each of these solar panels and you put them up side by side on the short side, so the narrow side, it's 115 kilometers uh, long. If you were to take them apart and put them side by side, 115 kilometers long. If you put them side by side and you did it the long way, so landscape or horizontal, whichever way you want to call it, uh, it's 230 kilometers uh, as well. But a lot of this has got to do with, and I'm sure you're going to touch on this later, Paul, is being able to make the mine not just self-sufficient, but more economically efficient as well, because it does take a lot of uh, budget away from what the mine is paying for their own electricity. Yes, it helps during the blackouts, but they're also saving money in the long term, aren't they? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, you are correct to say that it's quite cost effective as well. Um, it is saving the mine quite a lot of money as well. And like I said earlier, um, it's the solar plant has the potential to provide just around 20% of South Deep's average electricity consumption as well. So it does go to show that how it is saving the mine a lot of money when you're looking at the economic uh, perspective around it as well. And we, we, we were being told that uh, when you're explaining about how long it would be when you're putting these solar panels side by side, horizontally or vertically as well, it's a distance of about from here until Ilovo in Johannesburg. Uh, so you can imagine how massive this a project is here as well. And what we're told is that the mining company is saying that it's trying to send a message to other mining companies to actually look into this um, route of uh, vying, clean, vying to clean energy and of course renewable energy as well which is quite cost effective on some of these mining companies saving them a lot of money as well and ensuring that whenever there is a continuous rolling blackouts it does not have a bearing on the mining operations and that it does not hamper whatever operations that are taking place here. But once again I just want us to take a listen to what uh, Mr. Benford from the Gold Leaf South Deep Mining uh, Company had to say early on regarding that issue of sending a strong message to uh, mining companies to actually look into this route of implementing wind farms and of course looking at how having renewable sources of energy would speak to the advantages of alleviating the energy crisis. It does uh, um, address the issue of uh, um, you know power outages yeah. as I would have said not only would it be uh, beneficial to uh, the companies, um, it will be beneficial to uh, um, the communities mm. because, you know, you're going to um, keep, um, you know, the operations running for much, uh, you know, um, longer. Um, the whole issue of uh, green energy is also beneficial into uh, the continent because we know that the uh, continent is uh, highly endowed yeah. with uh, the uh, mineral resources. Uh, Pule, it's great to see now that the sun is up as well. We can get a real sense of how big this uh, solar panel farm is. Is it a field? Is it a farm? I'm not quite sure what the right word is. Uh, it's a massive farm, whatever it might be uh, in the end as well. So uh, apart from uh, hearing from your earlier guest, uh, Pule, I see just after 8 o'clock this morning, I imagine still confirmed, uh, the Goldfield CEO. And I imagine one of the questions that I'd be very curious to hear, uh, if you wouldn't mind maybe just throwing it in there with the CEO, is this is all completely unnecessary is if ESCOM was actually doing their job, if we were not in the crisis that we currently find ourselves in now, you'll probably find Goldfields didn't have to go through all of this, put all the money down to build those solar panels. This is reacting uh, to bad management at ESCOM over the years, if we're being fair about it. Yeah, definitely. When I spoke to Mr. Benford earlier on, he did say that one of the reasons why they were actually installing some of these solar plants here is to try and address the issue of load shedding because whenever there's load shedding, it does have a sort of a disadvantage on their operations here. And what this does internally is that it essentially has um, a bearing on the economy as well. So that's the, one of the reasons why they had the solar plants. But of course, uh, we will be throwing into that question. They're asking the CEO. Uh, regarding the advantages of having this project here and uh, asking just around your question Gareth as to um, the importance of having the solar plant here we'll be speaking to the CEO of the company just uh, in a few uh, minutes from now